lounge and son. Welcome right, back to the comic lounge. My name's Ryan. And I'm Eli. And we're back talking some more TMNT, the Mirage Years. And today we're talking issue 29. And the reason we're talking this one is because recently we had an amazing chat with the cartoonist of this book, AC Farley. Go check that out if you haven't already checked it out. And um Check One of my all-time favorite creators. Oh, of he's Turtles. so good. Yeah, his uh, like I think we talked about with Talbot like on on an episode and, and Lawson. We talked about it too. Like they just have their such a distinct look for their turtles, and absolutely. it's like so embedded. And that, that it's not to say, um, or I can't say that for every single artist that's worked on turtles, but I can say that for the, these three names besides Kevin and Peter, and from that shell shock. The you know cover the love poster that, that he my did. absolute favorite yeah so good I love how it opens up with a cool little letter dude of yeah. him explaining his influences and stuff yeah. and his thought and like process. some of these Easter eggs it's like you know I put these Easter eggs in here but I'm gonna tell you like up front what they are they're like Asimov they're H P Lovecraft the Shadow Doc Savage yeah so cool Robert Heinlein Dracula you know, from Dune even Dracula dude that's right. Pretty Doesn't, sick. It's really sick. And hey, I mean, if we're getting these type of uh, you know, vampires here in this story, perhaps it's a little start from the vampires that we see later on in volume four. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I wonder if they did pull from that. Yeah. I like and I, then we I like this cold open. Like, who the fuck is this dude on this ship with this f- eyeball with it's wings? So sick. Yeah. It's such a dope design. It's like a Rick Rick Griffin poster come to life. Yeah. It's sick, dude. Another um, thing that uh, you know we we learned from AC when we interviewed him is, you know, he does a lot of uh, like mechanical drawings and stuff, and that's super evident in here. Yeah, absolutely. like the level of detail that he puts in these computers and in these everything. Yeah, and he even has some Kirby crackle here in panel four mm-hmm. with the duo shade and with black, as we learn that he's accessing the files on the Necronomicon. I like to call it. I'm not Superman. I'm not an alien life form exiled to this planet. <laughs> I can't fly unaided. Mm-hmm. This person isn't. Yeah. Platu, Varata, Nikto, Necktie. So cool, dude. It's like fucking random hero guy. And then we get right back to Northampton, dude. There we go. The turtle robot. It's so it's sick. sick. We see more of this too. Again, volume four, we see the micro turtle robots that rem- that are very, very reminiscent of this robot. Mm-hmm. The like cellular robots that go down into the remember that one? Did we, yeah, did we get, yeah, yeah. We got, we got that one. That. We did uh-huh. okay. 1990, bro. Dude, I'm three years old at this point, bro. Me too. We're the same I, age, I think, right? 84? I'm 87. Oh. I don't know math, I guess. It's a- <laughs> it's, uh, it's I mean, we might as well be around the same age. You're probably probably I'm like- six at this point, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, I, I, I'm a few months into being three because this is May 1990. I, I gotta call it the way he draws the turtles, dude. It's I love so the cool. bulkiness of them, mm-hmm. and there's like this weight that they have, the stockiness to them. Yeah. Everything it's, about it, his turtles is great. It's almost more turtly, you know, because even a young turtle is wrinkly and, and you know, has a lot of these, this craggly skin, you know, they don't have smooth skin, they wouldn't be shiny. Like the you know cartoon turtles we see, they would be grizzly looking. They would be wrinkly. Also, how uh how big their pupils are, oh like the God, black yeah. in their eye. Yeah, it's phenomenal, dude. I no, I don't think anybody else does the turtles like that with their eyes. Nobody does. Lawson sometimes doesn't even put anything in there at all, and a yeah, number of different white. people don't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and his use of the duo shade as well is it's so different. Everyone. That's another thing has their own uh, way to do it, and I think in some interview Eastman or Laird said that Steve Bissett or Rick Veach, maybe it was Rick Veach that they were like he's the best, you know, mm-hmm. he's the best ever at it. So we'll so we learn that Donnie is in this giant robot that they were at first fighting. We're like, oh, what's going on? It's going crazy. Donnie's in there. Mm-hmm. He got some. Uh, he got this junk from the U.S. Robots and Mechanical Men salvage, and that's like what he says in the beginning is from uh, Isaac Asimov story. I like the way he draws Splinter too, man. He's like, move away from the machine. What? And then there's what's wrong with the master? 
<laughs> just yeah. Chill, yeah. He has one of the best, one of the best splinters too, because you know, a lot of times everyone's like, Oh, he looks like a dog and stuff. Yeah. Uh, he but, looks like yeah, a rat. Yeah. I love the way his like long, like bony fingers too. Yeah. All right. And then we shoot over here to Arkham, Massachusetts, which he also says in the beginning that Arkham was picked up for me from a certain, it's not from a certain DC comic. It's from H HP loves craft mm -hmm. HP Lovecraft's the shadow over in's mouth. And also we see here his comic book shop. AC I know Farley, that's so dope. The comic shop that he was working at when he was writing the story, altered earth comics. Altered I also earth wouldn't earth. have known that if and I didn't know that until we interviewed him too, that, that he had a comic shop. I love that these kids are coming out of the comic shop and this one kid fucking saved his money to get a first printing of Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. That's awesome. Like that, yeah. that is for a true com this is for like a true comic book fan, this entire page. And a kid saving his money. He got a nap. He's about to fucking get grounded. He don't give a shit. He doesn't yeah. care. He's like, I might as well spend all this money now. I'm not yeah. gonna be able to do shit later. And uh, I love his hair too, because I didn't have the flat top, but I definitely had in 1990, I definitely had those lines cut in the side of my hair. I gotta see. I thought that. I was about to do a ninja rep. You gotta see a photo? I, I, I see definitely a photo. have one. I, I definitely have one. All right. Yeah, that's the vanilla ice haircut right there. Oh, dude. hell yeah. Ninja, ninja rap. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. And then we see the typical fucking scumbag bully, dude, making fun of somebody for liking comics. Oh, you gotta hate a bully, man. Dude, I hate this moment. Look at him. Look at him. Just He's got a skid row t shirt on. Come oh, on. dude. Fucking nose piercing is fucking look at that fucking triple fucking chin neck fat right there, dude. What a donkey. Come I hate on. this guy. Yeah, hate him. God, and of course he's picking on him. And then, you know, to add insult to injury, he rips Dark Knight number one in half. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. I hate this guy. That killed me. That killed me as I was reading. I was like, I probably would have cried. Oh I would have cried. I don't cry often. But if I you probably just... would oh my god. Can you imagine yeah. like at that age too? You saved all your money for this yeah. fucking comic book. It's, it's like at that point, it's like it's a key issue to you. It's probably one of your grails. Absolutely, Graham. And the look on his face. And the fact that in the final panel of the page, he's just standing there. He's probably like frozen, dumbfounded. His buddy's like, Max? M Max? Like he's just standing there like seething, cold sweat, like yeah. shaking, like full of hatred. Uh, uh, a feeling that will, he'll be able to call on for the rest of his life when he's like <laughs> yeah. full yeah. of anger. And it's something he's never going to forget, dude. That, never, that's very traumatizing. that. You flash and, over to UMass. Yeah, yeah, dude. There's a fucking hostage situation, bro. Mm -hmm. This is another thing that I feel like these guys do a lot of times when, and especially they're in Northampton, they use these locations that they have around them, that they know that are actual locations. You know, I'm sure he, if he didn't go there and draw this, he either knows it or he has a photo. And this is like exactly at what this place looks like, guaranteed, you know? Yeah, and because he did that he was working on this cover for the uh um for the 40th uh anniversary TMNT convention that's happening right yeah and this I, I don't I can't remember exactly but this looks like that same building he didn't finish it he's still working on it but it looks like this where the turtles are sitting on this roof because it's a very like distinguishable building like this doesn't look like your typical yeah. There's no way this is made up. This has to be a real place for sure. Yeah. And when I was in Northampton the night before I got my tattoo from um Talbot, I found on the like Technodrome, you know, forum all these Northampton locations to find, you know. And so mm -hmm. I was walking around and they would show you like here's this panel from this page and here's what they drew, stand here to see the and I was like this city looks like I feel like I'm in a turtle book because all this stuff is is the architecture that I've grown to know so well through that's these cool. like Mirage books. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's to me that yeah, that's like going and seeing like from a film location. But yeah, it, like, I love doing I that. get the same fucking feeling. Dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, we're in LA and there's a lot of these film locations that you can just kind of find, you know. It's like mm -hmm. seeing the Doc Brown mansion or something, or you know, it's just really cool. Yeah, hell yeah. And then we see like on the fucking radio that's that's playing and and given the lowdown of what's happening, you know, Splinter's like, listen, because they mentioned that somebody overheard the guy that was trying to get the guards call him Casey. Yeah. And so they're all tied. It's Casey and April tied up. And we got these like people like they kind of remind me of, uh, 
you know the fucking guys in weird science that that attack them and um you know what i'm talking about Yeah, the like at punks, the party the like industrial yeah punks, yeah. uh-huh that's what these guys remind me of Yeah. now i don't know if that was an influence or not but that's like that's what i heard i heard their voices and that's Yeah. exactly what i was imagining when i looked at They them definitely have like a road warrior like 80s movie type of vibe. mm-hmm Yeah. And and again, AC's Craig's art like is so sick. These like square jaws and the rough faces and yet he still makes april like very female looking you know that's a that's a problem that cartoonists have sometimes who are who excel at this grizzly muscly square jawed person sometimes the female characters get lost but it, not not for craig Mm -hmm. and then this or ac fucking weird creepy guy's like to die to be truly dead that would be glorious how creepy his fucking teeth look the yeah puncture marks on his neck because he yeah got bit by one of the vamps they're kind of like zompire yeah fans they're like yeah it's so cool and so it continues man they're like expositioning out right here and then this reminds me of like one of the fucking the mutants in uh dark knight returns right here the guy with the oh scar absolutely with like the face paint kind of thing and he's almost got like some kiss face paint or Uh -huh. looks like a star trek delta right now Yeah. And then the lettering here, when he's attention like, to detail so yeah, sorry, Lord. And like the way he fucking like makes it all squiggly lines on the lettering there. yeah so good The man detail is insane, yeah. and the turtles who probably have been to this museum before after hours or something you know because th that's another thing again that i love about the turtles they're not without curiosity for all types of art you know and this is something splinter would maybe like you know let's sneak into the museum here so i can show you this art exhibit so they know how to get in they're going through this top entrance they're going to sneak in on these on these villains the vampires but oh my god panel two look at that look I know how that rendered I and it's so good. It's so good, dude. I know. I love it too because they sneak in here and then you know Leo's like, all right, chill out, stop Mm -hmm. for a second. Wait, just wait. We're coming in. And we and we only want the man and the woman. This <laughs> panel two, I just hear like it would be in like house shows they have like, you know, they have the theme song like Bino Pink Pink but it would be like like it would be like the soft mysterious version of the theme you know <laughs> immediately the x-men theme came into my head because i watched 97 last night but Yeah, I gotta watch a new episode. Um, I love, look at how just that little side part of Ralph's face, you can see that he's like bursting with like anger, ready to fucking roll, dude. Just yeah in that small little corner of his mouth. Mm -hmm. They've got April and Casey. Oh, Yeah, so dude. good. Absolutely I love the design amazing. of this guy too. That's something that I really dig about this is all the designs of every single character in this book, not Yeah. turtles that AC's designed. Cause this is all coming from him Yeah. and it's just the attention. Like you've said it, the attention to detail is just next level. Yeah, that guy is a ball of creativity. Yeah. You know, he's he's so good. And here we go. Oh, yeah. And Allard, too. Uh, that's the name. That's one of the aliases of the shadow in his real Yeah, says life. owes oh, its existence to Doc Savage and Shadow. Yeah. I love this, dude. I love when the turtles do that like cannonball move. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so Sick. good. Wasn't that in Tournament Fighters or one of the video games you could do that type of move? Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the spinning thing. Anyway, Yeah. yeah, here they're coming in and they're starting to battle. And again, too, the guy with the, the ears, too, man. It's such a perfect... Damn. I love... I just love looking at Farley's books. You know, these were some of the early ones that I went after when I was... I am so thankful that I was on board when the Mirage licensing website... was like selling back issues for five bucks Mm -hmm. like 10 years ago because I was buying up. I would either get antsy or maybe drunk and just like buy a bunch of back issues just off there because I would always build carts and be like, oh my God, I got to get this stuff. And man, they had Mirage hats and shirts and man, I miss that so much. I know I definitely got quite a few issues from them. Yeah. Uh, but I was also in high school at the time. So it was like, Hey mom, can you order me some shit? You know, like, <laughs> well, this was even, I think it was even going till maybe like five or six years ago. 
that I know I just I felt right. I completely forgot about it at one point you know I got after graduating high school like I still was reading comic books but I just like for whatever yeah. reason I kind of stopped paying attention yeah, to the I did website too. yeah and well I think everyone kind of has that moment where like girls and partying or trying to fit into the world happens and you you never stray fully away you know but yeah. you know but that's why I'm missing some of volume four you know, because of that exactly. moment in time. Me too. And but luckily, I did get some of these issues from them. That's why my my Mirage Volume One is as complete as it is. Same. It's because of that website. Yeah. And it's all down to that one that now is two hundred fifty dollars because it's the first appearance of Space Usagi. But it's like, come on, it's not. Yeah, it's, so it's just an ad. You don't. Look anyway, at these yeah. eight panels too, dude. Like on insane the opposite. How <laughs> much Fully detail, packed. dude? Overlapping just, multiple. Yeah. You you rarely ever see this, and I'll tell you the only other place I've seen this type of overlap is like a Pander Brothers, uh, Grendel series, and that's only because we looked so deeply at those on the Grendel cast at the Devil in Detail on all podcast platforms. So much so, like, and this is it's absolutely glorious and so well done by Farley. Yeah, if for some reason this reminds me a lot of like Mad Magazine, some of the comics you'd see in there. Yeah. Because they too would have like a lot of this stuff where it was just, I mean, not the similar type of story, but like a bunch of heads all here and it's like overlapping. Like, I feel like I've seen that in like Cracked or Mad too. Yeah. But well, th just, those are just places where these normal rules of comics, you weren't number one held to them by an editor and you were encouraged to, to do something new and fresh with the form, you know? Mm -hmm. I love the bottom panel, especially with the Turtles, Casey and April. Shit, man, that's so good. Dude, all of this dude, is fucking amazing yeah so it's like a standoff here and he crashes out the window with the bomb that they were going to blow up the uh, museum with They're like not this time brah yeah it's crazy because it's this fucking guy well well, i kind of glossed over but this guy that we saw in the beginning of the issue is here and so he fucking flies in even though he says he can't fly on his own i don't know how he did it but he grabs his dude with the bomb and you could just see it like Little squiggly line fucking and the explosion go <laughs> yeah yeah it's sick and then this like tracking shuriken like how have they not used that again like look at that contraption it's so smart right into the truck the in's mouth seafood that's usually where i like seafood too in my mouth <laughs> it, it's crazy that they never like you would think donatello would have these all the like, time you know i mean they did have those fucking turtle they had turtle comms. trackers or something yeah. like turtle comms yeah yeah so it's like i wonder why they didn't because it does make sense it's pretty dope though yeah and and again we see in the last panel on this page like uh these this farley style mouth you know i've tried many different times to draw the turtles in my favorite you know ways which is based mostly you know and I usually classify it after Eastman and Laird because they're, you know, but it's like Lawson, Farley, and Talbot. And so, like, there's this mouth. It's almost like a W shape that he does. And if you see it in the top left, I think it's Leo. Um, it, he's got that perfect, like, Farley W mouth, mm -hmm. which shows that, like, the turtle has, like, a beak. And, and you know, the, the bottom is kind of uh, protruding. Yeah. It's just really well done. Come back to the kids, dude. Mm -hmm. they're hurting and he's he's out there screaming into nothingness about his lost comic until something crash land yeah. we never learned this dude's name right That's right yeah you know, so I've he's learned. fucking he got fucking blown over here from that explosion that he was just in but he survived i mean you can see the smoke coming off of him and stuff and they help him over to his fucking spaceship dude yeah max and purvis yeah, I tried, you know, it's always great. MirageLicensing.com has like pretty in-depth reviews or uh, story sum synopses of these books. So you can always refer back to those. But, you know, so they get him out of there and he's like, what's going on? And Until then they're going to put him in this like tube. I just need to lay here for a while, which he's is healthy. basically this healing fucking tube, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And Max just looking, look at this, the fucking technology that's going on in here, dude. All these little weird, like the weird pets he has with these winged eyeballs. Yeah. He's like, dudes, don't touch anything. Of course, yeah. don't touch anything. He touches something and guess what? We get a lot of exposition as well. A lot of information about the world. 
I wonder if he based these kids off anyone. Yeah, I know. Like maybe some kids that came into the shop or something that he yeah. worked at. Yeah. I like to think that. Like maybe there was a kid that came in, bought fucking Batman, had his comic ripped in half. Like, because it is such a like random thing to kind of throw into this story. It's yeah. great. I love it. But it, like, it's very specific to where I'm like, fuck, I hope that didn't happen to this. Kid. You know? <laughs> Me too. Me too. Now they're back at it with the fucking turtle bot. Just, <laughs> just carrying all of them, dude. Like, exactly. Like they them. tracked, they tracked the truck with all the vampires, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Let's bring in the robot." Oh, dude, I love this design right here, dude. With the fucking, I love when they do the vampires with like the noses, like that are like just slits. Yes, yes, that's so sick. Fucking <laughs> braids and shit. Crazy. <laughs> So well done. Yeah. All the characters on and Farley really did so well with that when you got into his Bioneers or um his other books and stuff. So cool. Mm -hmm. Dragon Force, Team Dragon Force, I think it's called now. So they're breaking in, they're like they bust open the healing tube and they catch him and like, yeah, exactly. This next spread. Oh no, I already I already went. You're right, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, well, well, um, Furbis. Wait, what's his name? Not Furbis. Phineas, per Max Purvis. Purvis. Yeah, Purvis. Yeah. Max and Purvis. Yeah, yeah. So Purvis like tries to get away, but he realizes he gets caught, and his bike's all bent up. Then he's like, until he he's like, I can't go find help now. And then who shows up? Bing now. I love this fucking page. So, you imagine being a kid and you just see this fucking massive robot with fucking turtles and Casey and Splinter just roll up on you. We're kind of lost. Can you give us some directions? Hey, kid. The kid's like, whoa. Hell yeah. And then, hey, they're actually at In's Mouth Seafood. That's where all the... Uh... I wonder if that's like where... Remember, there's the story of Kevin was like working at a seafood restaurant doing dishes when he first saw yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. scat comic or whatever. I wonder if that's where. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Yeah, I wonder. Oh, that guy's name's Allard. That's his name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the, the shadow guy. Right. And so here they are making these sacrifices, doing their demonic ritual. This kid's about to be his last drink. Yeah, dude. <laughs> One last toast to eternity. The fear in his eyes, dude. He's like, I'm fucked. Yes. And they're trying to bring forth this dagon character mm -hmm. uh, i love the letters like, on this made-up language that he did yeah it's sick like it's it looks like an alien language but we still kind of can like read dagon at least we beg you consume us and that's when the turtles crash in and the computer guy and max break free kill them for the mighty dagon who on the next page, erupts out of the ether. Look at that fucking design, dude. It's yeah, insane. So sick. It reminds me of something like you'd see in like Hellboy or something, dude. Well, because he said H.P. Lovecraft, and yeah. also Hellboy is inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. So yeah, right on, man. Love dude. this fucking panel right here. Everybody just fucking going at it here. Yeah. And dude, this panel of Splinter, too. You almost never see him. You know, he's always portrayed as such a peaceful... Uh, kind of creature and here he is like screaming and and you see his fangs and he, you know he looks like a angry rat there you know mm -hmm. so sick so much action on these pages dude and i love this with casey too i Batter love when he's scuzz. like yeah he's got his fucking like trench coat on yeah and shit fucking shattered bat you almost like a fucking sword now right well that plants the seed of what's going to happen in a minute yeah, right. And here. So the other dude packs his, grabs the the knife and slushes it into him, Sick. chucks it in. He's like, Wah! and it's just like you know, it's a, a stake to the heart, you know, mm -hmm. or it's a stake to wherever. <laughs> now it smells worse than it already did. But then <laughs> thwip, he grabs the guy. They're like, no way. And they One. fucking push this dude back into this gateway. Yeah. One very dangerous option left. Close the gateway from the other side. Yeah, so he goes in, find the stranger and the artifact, but no, no dice. Nothing more we can do here. I agree for your friend, but we must all return home. And then we get the fucking, uh, you know, the kids, you know, he's a little bit cockier now because he's been through some shit. Stands up to, stands up to the bully. 
Ain't having it, smashed. Yep. Ends up with a black eye, yeah. <laughs> but that's all right. It's a that's a first step on uh getting stronger. Mm-hmm. And then we see that too. He's ended up somehow back in there, and we yep. get this final panel I'm looking off to the side. Six it's more. Then we get a sick um a brat pack ad here. Random, dude. Yeah, I don't remember I mean, seeing this when I read this the first time. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Get a Brat Pack ad. We get another Mark Baudet ad, which is kind of funny. The last time we were, when we were talking with the Talbot issue, there was one for issue 18, and then he comes back on issue 32. That's right. And then the Veach Man returns. That is such a crazy issue, man. Dude, we got to do that one, too. All right, yeah. Yeah. Let's just do them all. Yeah, we'll do them all. <laughs> Maybe not. In, we won't do them necessarily in order. We don't have to do them in order, but yeah. that's the great thing about this run is that, like, Except unless it's like the first like 10 issues, which is like in order, um, everything else for the most part, maybe like two parters, one parter, and they all stand very much on their own. Yeah. So they're all fun to talk about, dude. And then this back ad for the green, gray sponge suit sushi turtle. Yeah, so funny. And, you know, they're like, don't tell, you know, but also Mark Martin has had done some issues of the Mirage series and stuff. So he's friends with the guys. And, yeah. Well, yeah. So sick. great, great fucking issue. Yeah, go find a copy. Like I said before, always great to get the single issues as opposed to in the collection. I mean, however you can read it, do it. Yeah, but absolutely. I highly recommend getting the singles and go check out that AC interview. And uh, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note, we're out. Shell yeah. <laughs>